So Meta just unveiled Area Gen 2, their next generation of AI-powered glasses, bringing us one step closer to the future of wearable AI. Meanwhile, Amazon is stepping up its game with Alexa Plus, an upgraded version of Alexa that's more capable than ever. It can now book reservations, order food, and even hire a repairman for you. And lastly, Figure CEO Brett Adcock reveals new details about Helix, their major internal breakthrough that is significantly speeding up their entire operation. Let's get into it. So there's been a ton of AI news this last week. We've got some major model releases to talk about, as well as some other very interesting announcements from several companies as we briefly touched on in the intro. Starting with the release of Claude 3.7 Sonnet and Claude Code. This was a major release that probably didn't get enough attention. Not only did Anthropic drop Claude 3.7 Sonnet, the first hybrid reasoning model on the market, but they also introduced a research preview of Claude Code, the first true AI software engineer. Now, I already made an entire video covering this release, so I won't go into too much detail here, but essentially, this model is state-of-the-art in virtually all benchmarks. It does lag a little bit behind OpenAI's O3 Mini model and DeepSeek R1 in math benchmarks, like the Math 500 and the Amy, but otherwise, it is state-of-the-art. Here is where Claude 3.7 Sonnet really shines though, its coding abilities. Claude has always been the go-to model for coders and that has never been more so the case, as it is absolutely blowing other state-of-the-art models out of the water on the SWE Bench Verified, a software engineering benchmark. To give you a sense of how good this model truly is at coding, here is a recent post from Ethan Mullick, a prominent researcher in the AI space. You know how you usually see those videos of people testing out models by having them create the snake game, and then maybe adding some extra things here and there, like an extra block or even an extra snake? Well, Ethan Mullick took this a step further and gave Claude 3.7 Sonnet the following prompt. Make a snake game, but the snake is self-aware it is in a game and trying to escape, and interesting things happen as a result. As you can see, the snake is typing things out as it plays in the bottom of the screen, seemingly aware of what's going on. Now, what's likely happening here is the model is just mimicking what a self-aware snake in the scenario would say, so I don't think it is actually self-aware, but things do start to get a little interesting as the game goes on. It ends up turning the board into matrix mode, seemingly unprompted, and starts to uncover what the world it lives in is truly made of. It then comes to the realization that it's just a collection of pixels and code, and even turns this around on the user, saying what if you are in a game as well? That's where things start to get pretty trippy, and you can even take this to a whole other level. Ethan Mullick then gave Claude 3.7 Sonnet a follow-up prompt. Great, now make a new snake game that is aware of the snake game you just made. So you can really let your creativity run wild, you literally don't even need to know how to code. This was done entirely through natural language in only a few sentences. By the way, there may be a few other models that can replicate this, but in general, Claude 3.7 Sonnet seems to be the best option as of right now. And of course, there's Claude Code, Anthropic's AI software engineering agent. Again, this is still just a research preview with very limited capabilities, but it's the beginning of what's to come. That is, fully autonomous AI software engineers that may eventually surpass the capabilities and output of the average or even the best human engineers. Right now, it can search and read code, edit files, write and run tests, commit and push code to GitHub, and use command line tools, all while keeping you in the loop at every step. But you can imagine where this might be in a few years. So I won't play the demo in this video as it is really long and you probably have already seen it from my last video, but as always, I'll provide the links in the description for those who want to look more into it. Now, in other model releases, there was of course OpenAI's release of GPT 4.5. Again, I made an entire video covering just this release, so definitely check it out if you haven't already. But to give you a quick rundown, essentially with this model, they focused heavily on making it feel very natural to engage with. As I said here, early testing shows that interacting with GPT 4.5 feels more natural. Its broader knowledge base, improved ability to follow user intent, and greater EQ make it useful for tasks like improving writing, programming, and solving practical problems. We also expect it to hallucinate less. On the simple QA accuracy benchmark, it is clearly OpenAI's most accurate model and hallucinates at a much lower rate. And when comparing GPT 4.5 to its predecessor GPT 4.0, human testers also preferred it at a decently higher rate for everyday tasks, professional tasks, and even creative intelligence. Now, on traditional benchmarks like the GPQA, the AMI, the SWE Bench Verified, and so on, its scores are really nothing special. In fact, it's overall a subpar model when compared to other Frontier models like Grok 3, Gemini 2 Pro, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and even Claude 3.5 Sonnet. 
Keep in mind though, GPT 4.5 is not a reasoning model. It's a regular standard LLM, and it's actually going to be the last standard LLM OpenAI releases. Sam Altman mentioned in a post on X that they plan to unify both the O series models, or the reasoning models, and the GPT series models, the non-reasoning models going forward, into one model that just handles everything. Very similar to what Anthropic did with Claude 3.7 Sonnet, the first hybrid reasoning model. So overall, GPT 4.5 is definitely a step up from GPT 4.0, and is going to feel a lot better to interact with. But depending on the task at hand, you may be better off using one of OpenAI's reasoning models like O1 or O3 Mini, or even another model like Claude or Gemini. I think GPT-5 though, which should hopefully be here in the next few months, will be the big release that everyone kind of looks at and says, okay, OpenAI is still in the lead and is still putting out incredible models that really push the frontier of AI capabilities. Now onto Meta's AI glasses, they've just introduced their second generation called Area Gen 2. They hope these will enable researchers from industry and academia to unlock new work in machine perception, contextual AI, robotics, and more. But really, Meta is hoping for a future where AI glasses become the next major computing platform, potentially replacing the iPhone to some extent. And honestly, based on the progress they've been making, I'm starting to see how that could happen. Check this out. With Project Aria, we reimagined a wearable device with a sensor suite that could perceive as you perceive and in doing so enables the development of a new generation of artificial intelligence that has a better understanding of who you are and makes possible new advancements in robotics. Project Aria from the outset was designed to begin a revolution around always on human-centric computing. We're excited to announce the next step in our journey, the second generation of Aria glasses. With Gen2 glasses, we are building AI capabilities with a deeper understanding of the wearer's context and the environment. Aria Gen 2 is the perfect tool for researchers pushing the boundaries of AI and AR. What you see here is the same as this. We have upgraded the sensor suite with additional computer vision camera for enhanced location and embodied tracking. We have increased battery capacity by over 40% without a weight increase. The device features a contact microphone and special microphones. It can distinguish between your voice and those of bystanders. Aria Gen 2 determines your location, both indoors and outdoors. Advanced eye tracking camera tracks your gaze to understand what you're looking at and tracks your hand to identify the object you interact with, all while monitoring your heart rate for a comprehensive understanding of your well-being. We introduce the ability to process a lot of the signals on the device in real time. As soon as you do that, you move away from the context of data collection and processing later. Then we can start to interact with the user, not just research what might be possible, but actually experience it. Help me pick up some red onions. Taking you to red onions. Red onions are here. Very important parts of Project Aria has been building partnerships with companies and academic research labs that have reached far beyond our own. We stay committed to research processes that safeguard personal information. The journey with second gen Aria glasses is just the beginning. Imagine what the research community can achieve with a device that closes the gap between machine and human perception. Together, we can unlock an understanding of what it is to experience reality as we do. So what do you guys think? Do you ever see yourself rocking these in the future on the daily? I know they still have a ways to go, but I could see the potential, especially if you think about the combination of AI glasses and capable AI agents, which are on the rise right now. I mean, imagine being able to instruct an AI agent to do something like booking a flight, managing your schedule, or even summarizing information from the world around you all seamlessly just by looking at something and giving a quick command. And the true game changer will be when AI agents become smart enough to anticipate what you need before you even ask, making these glasses feel less like a tool and more like an extension of your mind. I think at that point, I'm definitely buying a pair if I haven't already. Now, while we're on the topic of Meta, they've also announced plans to release a standalone AI app to compete with OpenAI's ChatGPT. 
According to sources familiar with the matter, Meta aims to debut this app in the second quarter of this year. They state here, it marks a major step in Meta CEO Mark Zuckerberg's plans to make his company the leader in artificial intelligence by the end of the year, ahead of competitors such as OpenAI and Alphabet. These are some pretty ambitious plans from Zuckerberg, and they definitely got the attention of OpenAI CEO Sam Altman. He reposted the article, stating, Okay, fine, maybe we'll do a social app. And lol, if Facebook tries to come at us and we just Uno reverse them, it would be so funny. So Sam Altman is clearly ready to take on Meta, even threatening to challenge them at their own game, social media. While he might just be trolling, it would be interesting to see what a social media app created by OpenAI would even look like. But jokes aside, Meta is serious about this, and they are even looking to spend over $200 billion to build out a new AI data center. This is a massive investment on top of Meta's already massive investments in AI so far. Apple is looking to invest a ton of money into the development of AI data centers as well, with plans to invest over $500 billion over the next four years. So at this point, it's clear, big tech is all in on AI. And as the decade progresses, we're only going to see larger and more powerful AI systems emerge. And while they're all competing for dominance, realistically, there's more than enough demand for all of them to thrive. The AI revolution is just getting started. In other AI news, Amazon introduces Alexa Plus, the next generation of Alexa. They state, Alexa Plus is more conversational, smarter, personalized, and she helps you get things done. She keeps you entertained, helps you learn, keeps you organized, summarizes complex topics, and can converse about virtually anything. Alexa Plus can manage and protect your home, make reservations, and help you track, discover, and enjoy new artists. She can also help you search, find or buy virtually any item online, and make useful suggestions based on your interests. Alexa Plus does all this and more. Essentially, Alexa Plus is an LLM that can control your home and devices, and that has some agentic capabilities. As they state further, Alexa Plus also introduces agentic capabilities, which will enable Alexa to navigate the internet in a self-directed way to complete tasks on your behalf behind the scenes. Let's say you need to get your oven fixed, Alexa Plus will be able to navigate the web, use Thumbtack to discover the relevant service provider, authenticate, arrange the repair, and come back to tell you it's done. There's no need to supervise or intervene. So, I think we're finally getting to a point where these smart home assistants like Alexa or Google Home are actually becoming useful thanks to agentic AI. I mean, the whole point of these things are to assist you, but until now, they basically felt like a voice-controlled search engine with limited capabilities. For years, smart assistants like Alexa and Google Home have been marketed as game changers, but in reality, they've mostly been glorified timers, weather checkers, and music players. But now, with agentic AI, we're finally seeing a shift towards real autonomy, where these assistants don't just answer questions, but take meaningful actions on your behalf. Now, in the world of AI video, we have a new player in town, Alibaba's WAN 2.1. WAN 2.1 is more than just a video model, it is an entire AI video suite. It's exceptionally good at generating realistic complex videos, featuring extensive body movements, complex rotations, dynamic scene transitions, and fluid camera motions, as you can see from these clips. Its understanding of physics is also clearly very accurate, given how realistic and fluid these clips look. Now, as I said, it's more than just a video model. You can actually edit your generations as well. With structure maintenance and posture maintenance, you can seamlessly modify specific parts of a scene while keeping the overall composition and motion intact. This means you can change a character's clothing, swap out an object in the background, or adjust fine details, all while preserving the original pose, structure, and natural flow of the video. It is also a image to video generator with the ability to select up to multiple images for reference. WAN 2.1 is also very good at generating accurate text within a video. This is something most video models struggle with, and as you can see, it can do this in a range of fonts and styles. And finally, you can also generate sound effects and music to go along with your AI generated video to create a more complete scene. So Alibaba's WAN 2.1 is definitely a competitor to OpenAI's Sora. Is it better? It's hard to say, but it's definitely close. China is clearly starting to catch up to American companies in this AI race though. I mean, they already have DeepSeek R1, which shocked the entire industry after outperforming OpenAI's O1, and now they have another exceptional video model to add to the mix. Speaking of DeepSeek, there have been some rumors going around that the release of their next reasoning model, DeepSeek R2, has been pushed up. According to Reuters, DeepSeek had planned to release R2 in early May, but now they are trying to speed that up to sometime even earlier. 
We don't really have any other specifics, but I guess we can expect to see this model within the next month or so. There was also the release of Pika 2.2 from Pika Labs. They introduced a major new feature called Pika Frames, which gives you the ability to transform your AI generated videos. As you can see, Pika Frames allows you to add multiple frames to your generation, giving you a level of control over how the scene progresses. Right now, you can only do this for up to 10 second videos, but they are extremely high quality and realistic. You can imagine that eventually their goal with this would be to give you the ability Ability to edit frame by frame, allowing for even more precise control over your video generations, but we're just not at that point yet. Now, in the world of AI video generation, Eleven Labs introduces Scribe, the most accurate speech-to-text model. Instead of boring you with all the details myself, here is a short video they provided that tells you everything you need to know. Introducing Eleven Labs Scribe, the most advanced AI transcription model ever created. Fully surpassing previous leaders such as Whisper and Gemini, our brand new model beats every accuracy benchmark, and it's all possible in 99 different languages, with features including character level timestamps, HIPAA compliance, and multi-speaker diarization Eleven 11 lab speech to text is available through both our web app or our advanced API. So whether you're powering training solutions, Hey, can you put me through to sales, please? Developing an app to transcribe voice, must remember to forward new referrals to HR. Or producing state-of-the-art subtitles. <laughs> Scribe is accurate, advanced, and industry-leading. Start building today with 11 Lab Speech to Text. Finally, the announcement that I'm most excited to share with you guys is from Figure Robotics. Their CEO, Brett Adcock, gave us yet another major update. This time, Figure is launching robots into the home this year. He states, Our AI, Helix, is advancing faster than any of us anticipated, accelerating our timeline into the home. Therefore, we've moved up our home timeline by two years, starting alpha testing this year. So Helix was the major breakthrough that Figure made internally, which caused them to leave their partnership with OpenAI. I made a video covering this already, but Helix is essentially a new AI system that allows these humanoid robots to actually learn and generalize to a certain extent. Figure robots can now pick up and place up to thousands of household items that they have never even seen before, and they can actually work together for the first time ever. This major breakthrough is why their timeline for getting these robots into homes has been sped up by two years. Now, it gets even crazier. In another post on X, the CEO said the following, Figure's product line is getting built for high volume this year. We have a cracked manufacturing engineering team designing our lines for significant volume. We'll have our robots on this line helping to build more robots. Humanoid robots building more robots, which then perform useful work for humans, will be the most important asset in the world. So we literally have humanoid robots building humanoid robots now. I mean, this is actually insane. I feel like people are still sleeping on the humanoid robotics industry, but it's clear that we're just one or two breakthroughs away from having affordable, capable humanoid robots in our homes. And they won't just be in our homes but also in our workplaces. I could truly see this being a multi-trillion dollar industry by the end of the decade at the rate this is progressing. But let me know what you guys think. Are you bullish on humanoid robots like me? Or do you think we are still a long ways away before these things are actually useful and capable across many environments? Drop your thoughts below. One more thing before we end the video, Perplexity announced Comet, a browser for agentic search. This seems to be the same thing as OpenAI's Deep Research Agent, or Grok's Deep Search. Essentially, an agent that could conduct research on the web autonomously. All we know right now is that it's coming soon, so I'll definitely keep you guys updated. Also, speaking of agentic search, OpenAI's Deep Research Agent is now available to plus tier users. You won't have unlimited use, even pro users don't have unlimited use for deep research, but for plus tier users, I believe we get 10 uses per month. Anyways, that is all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.